Here we're going to look at a nice geometry problem, which we will solve using elementary calculus. So let's say we've got this unit square. So by that, I mean a square with side length one. And then I have these four quarter circles that are inside of the square. So they're constructed in the following way. So this circle here from this vertex to this vertex is centered over here at this opposite vertex. So that gives that circle a radius of one, and then all of the other ones are symmetrically constructed. So this circle from here to here is a circle with radius one and center at this vertex, and then so on and so forth. And what we wanna do is find the area of this yellow shaded region. So first what we'll do is put this in the coordinate plane. And then once we have it in the coordinate plane, we can find some of these intersection points and then set up an integral. So let's maybe go ahead and put this point down here at the origin. So that'll be the point zero, zero. This will be the point one, zero. This will be the point one, one. And then finally, this will be the point zero, one. Again, that's because we've got a square with side length one. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the equations of these circles. That'll be pretty helpful. So notice that this circle right here from one zero to zero one, that's a circle of radius one centered at the origin at this point. So that means it's got a nice equation and that equation is given by x squared plus y squared equals one. So let's just put it up there so we can see that that's the equation of that circle. Okay, now let's maybe look at some of the other circles. So this one right here, so that goes from the origin to this point one one, it's centered at one zero. So we can write that as x minus one squared plus y squared equals one squared or equals one. So that shifts the center over to this point right here, one comma zero. And then finally, I think we're gonna need one more circle just in order to set up all of our equations. And that will be this one right here. So maybe I'll write its equation here. So notice that has radius one and center zero one. So that's gonna be x squared plus y minus one squared equals one, like that. Now, using some symmetry, we won't actually need to do anything with the equation of this last circle, but maybe just for completeness, let's put its equation in here. So that's gonna be x minus one squared plus y minus one squared equals one, because it has radius one and center one, one. Okay, so next what we wanna do is split this region up into four equal pieces. So it's not too hard to see that it will symmetrically split up into four pieces, which I will deconstruct using these two orange lines. There we have these have equal area. So that reframes our goal as finding the area of this bit, which I'm now putting in orange and multiplying that by four. So let's maybe make that observation now. So notice the area of, so this yellow bit, which I'll just maybe make a yellow shaded thing, that's gonna be four times the area of this orange thing. So I'll make that an orange shaded thing. So that's building up a quarter of the area of the whole yellow, just by symmetry. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna notice is that this has a nice form. That's the area between the curve defined by this top circle and the curve divide, defined by this horizontal line. So that means we need to calculate the equation of this horizontal line, and also we need to calculate these two intersection points. So let's maybe go ahead and do that first, and we'll do that here and then put the intersection points on our plane. So let's maybe first intersect these two circles. So find this intersection point. So that's gonna be x minus one squared plus y squared equals one and x squared plus y squared equals one. So we wanna solve that system of equations really. So let's maybe see how we can do that. 
So maybe my favorite way to do that would be to take this equation and put it underneath, and then we'll subtract these two equations. So if we subtract those two equations, that's gonna give us x minus one squared minus x squared equals zero. So the y squared part cancels. But that's actually really nice because we can factor this like a difference of squares. So it's like a squared minus b squared, that factors like a minus b times a plus b. So here we've got x minus one minus x times x minus one plus x equals zero. Again, factoring it as a difference of squares. So notice this one is equal to just negative one because the x and the x cancel. So we can divide this whole thing by negative one and that tells us that the only solution will be gained when this x plus x minus one equals zero. But that's the same thing as two x equals one or x equals half. So that tells us the x coordinate of this intersection point. So maybe we'll just put that down here and this is at x equals one half which makes sense that this should cut this thing right in the middle. And it's right between zero, zero and one, zero. Now by symmetry, we could do the same thing and argue that this horizontal line is at y equals one half. So next what we want to do is calculate the x coordinate of this guy and the y coordinate of this guy. So let's maybe calculate the y coordinate of this and then by symmetry, the x coordinate of this second one will be the y coordinate of this one. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, we can take this x value and then plug it into either of these equations up here. So we'll take x equals half, plug it up there. That gives us a quarter plus y squared equals one. That's y squared equals three quarters. That's y equals plus minus square root of three over two but we clearly need to pick the plus square root of three over two because minus square root of three over two would be some intersection point that's happening in another quadrant. So let's put that point right here. So this point right here is going to be the square root of three over two. So that tells you that this intersection point is given by one half root three over two. So the x coordinate is a half and the y coordinate is root three over two. Then by symmetry, the x coordinate of this guy right here is also going to be square root of three over two. And that tells us that this coordinate right here is root three over two comma half. So maybe we'll do one more thing before we clean this up and then set up an integral, and that is express this circle equation as a function of y. So notice it's the top half of the circle so that when we solve for y here, this is gonna be y equals the square root of one minus x squared. So let's maybe put a little bubble around that just to show us that that is the equation of that circle. Okay, so let's maybe write in words here. So this is gonna be the area between y equals root one minus x squared and y equals half for x on the interval. So half to root three over two. So half root three over two like that. So that's the argument that we've made. So let's get rid of this and then calculate the appropriate integral. So on the last board, we surmised that the area of our yellow region was four times the area of our orange region then the area of our orange region was the area between the curve y equals root one minus x squared and y equals half for x on the interval half to root three over two. So that tells us that our goal area is equal to four times the integral from one half to root three over two of the top curve equation, which is one minus x squared under a radical, minus the bottom curve equation, which is a half. So that means we need to calculate that integral. 
Okay, so let's split it up into two integrals because one is just of a constant function, so that's pretty nice. So this is gonna be equal to four, and then we have the integral from half to root three over two of square root of one minus x squared dx, and then it'll be minus two times the integral from half to root three over two of just dx, like that. Okay, so now maybe next thing that we could do is take this minus sign and use it to change the order of the bounds of integration. And next we could take this two and have it expand the bounds of integration. So I'll change this minus two to a plus one by putting this lower bound at root three and this upper bound at one. Okay, good. Now you can see that just doing a straightforward calculation will give you the same answer, but I think this is kind of a nice way to do it. So that gives us the following setup. So we're gonna have one minus root three, that comes from this second integral, plus four times this integral right here, which I will circle in yellow. But a standard way to calculate that integral is with a trigonometric substitution. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. This really screams out for x to be set equal to sine theta. That's gonna make dx equal cosine theta d theta. And then that will make root one minus x squared equal to cosine theta as well. Now next, if sine theta is equal to a half, that tells us that theta is equal to pi over six. So that's a well-known value of sine. And then if sine theta is equal to root three over two, that tells us that theta is equal to pi over three. So we can put all of these things together to change our yellow circled integral into something involving trigonometric functions. So let's do that. So this will be the integral from pi over six to pi over three of, at this point it's gonna be cosine squared theta d theta. Now next we wanna calculate this integral. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Maybe we'll use a double angle formula this time. So here we have one minus root three. Then the double angle formula has a half as a multiplier. We'll use that half to turn, to turn this four into a two. So it'll be plus two. And then we'll have the integral from pi over six to pi over three of one plus cos two theta d theta. So again, that's like a power reducing formula or a double angle formula or something like that. Okay, so next what we can do is notice that this is going to be one minus root three, and then integrating out this two times one d theta from pi over three to pi over six, we'll have two times the length of the interval, but that gives us a plus pi over three, and then taking the antiderivative of cosine two theta, that'll gobble up this two that's out front and leave us with sine of two theta, which we need to evaluate from pi over six up to pi over three. But it's easy to check that sine has the same value at two pi over three and pi over three, which is what you get plugging in pi over three and pi over six into sine two theta. So that makes this whole thing cancel giving us our final answer. So the area of this yellow blob is this object down here, which is one minus root three plus pi over three. And that's a good place to stop.